Arthur, good win, but did you have to work for it? The first 20 minutes, yeah, we did. Uh, it was a very unorthodox shape when we done a set up, and uh, you know, I spoke to the players before the game about uh, freedom football and, and how sometimes that freedom football, which hasn't happened a lot, uh, certainly at the JD, most teams sit in and uh, wait for us to come on to them. But uh, you know, when they've got Addy up front, then they'll, they'll pump balls up to him, and uh, he's very effective. And, and obviously, we've seen that down there. So for 20 minutes, uh, we was a little bit. Um, Disjointed, I felt. Um, Hallam's had a decent chance before that, but Popey, the two saves, you know, he's made a, a brilliant save to to keep us, you know, in a clean sheet situation. I think after that, and and certainly after we scored, and then when we got the second one, we controlled the game, and uh, we had probably six or seven chances to win this football match, which is what at half time, you know, I told him to go and do. You know, Lewis had a good one on one. Nards has had the chip where he's, you know, tried to chip him. Uh, Tuts has had an open goal that he's just. Flashed and um, sat on and, and, and a couple of balls Nicky's put in. Uh, Nads has had a flash header from Nicky's ball. So, you know, we, we sort of went for the kill, went for the win. I just sensed at 2 0 uh, that Wimbledon just felt as though uh, they, they'd had the best effort for that first 20 minutes of the game. So we went for the kill and, uh, you know, nearly, you know, added to the goal tally. That first 20 minutes, was there a, a, maybe a sign of nerves, a bit of worry even? No, I don't think so. Uh, it looked apprehensive, but I just feel as though uh, that was the buoyancy of Wimbledon coming with nothing to lose, nothing to fear. Uh, other teams have come and, and put a real fear factor up and, and just uh, parked the bus, but Wimbledon didn't do that. And, uh, you know, they, they had a, a hoodoo to get off the bat. They wanted to go into next season with, you know, a positive uh, positive outcome um, for, for their away performances and, and they couldn't get one. So, no, I think uh, the freedom of, of Wimbledon um, it didn't take us by surprise, but certainly unnerved us a little bit. Again, to go, this is still not over. No, it's not. You know, it's. Um, it's I really wanted to get to that last day. Last day in English football uh, is a great day that we all look forward to. You know, from the media to the to the fans to management. You know, and we do look forward to it. It's, it's what English football is built on. There's never no gimmies in football. Uh, they're always opening in other European countries. You know the outcome of the game before you even start the game. So that's why we love English football. And uh, next week we've got a fantastic opportunity to take care of our own business. You know the telly was on when I went in the dressing room just then. Got the boys, you know, to switch it off. And we've concentrated on us today. We've concentrated on we, what we can affect. And that was 82 points. But uh, you know, I spoke to the lads this week, and I wanted 85 points. I think it's the highest uh, points total the club's ever finished in or ever gained. And that's something that you know I want to set as an objective for this group. Um, I do be, believe they can achieve it, you know. But there's certainly one more game to go where we've got to be absolutely ultra professional in everything we do. Does what's happened at Tranmere this season today does that have any, come into any bearing at all for next weekend? Or is it just about yourselves now? Um, it's about yeah. us, you know. It's you can only take care of your own situation. Always, um, there's a load of uh, stories out there where. You know, you go looking for what's going on in the football club, and you just waste your time and energy on it. You know, the permutation of certain scores, you can't do, you can't affect that. Um, like I'm saying, English football is unique in its uh, in its ability to throw up crazy results, and uh, the last day of the season uh, can have an edge to it, can have a nervousness to it, an apprehension to it, and um, you know, we we'll, we'll see from next week. But certainly, we've got a week to plan for it. Um, you know, it's been a bit of an emotional week in terms of us having the, the South End game and getting them back on track for that. We had a meeting Thursday, which is important. So we've had, uh, we've, you know, this was a massive game today. It really was a big game to get us to, towards our goal for Saturday. And uh, the boys have overcome it fantastically well. No Danny Mayer today, is he a problem? Yeah, um, after Tuesday's game, he just tightened up, you know, in his back, back area and uh, down into his glutes and his hamstrings. So he's got a bit of a... Uh, it was a it was a cautious decision for us. Danny obviously wanted to play, uh, but there was no way I was going to risk Danny. You know, we've we've already got our first objective, which is getting the playoffs. So that's something you know we're planning for another two games, and we have been, you know, for a few weeks now. So that's important that you know the, the tightness doesn't turn into something more sinister. You know, so we've acted on that as a, as a club, and we've took the call to to not play Danny and, and just to settle that area down because uh, he's vital to us. You got the same with Kelvin at halftime. Similar, yeah, similar. You know, we, we knew Kelv uh, could get to half time, and uh, 
you know, he's, a, he's had a neurological problem in his back and, um, you know, it was again, we, we had good discussions at half-time, um, got him settled and uh, we didn't want to overdo that injury site. So, you know, game management really. I think the Tuesday game again took its toll and uh, um, but I thought Sedgy when he came in was fantastic. Sedgy really controlled, dominated, has got us calm in that second half. So, you know, the players I've, I've brought in um, to do the job have done brilliant. Craig Jones seems to be enjoying himself today as well, scamping up and down that line. Yeah, you know, he's got a real verve. Uh, I think Jonah realises that, uh, you know, he wants to he wants to get better at what he does and um, he's certainly doing that. Uh, he's always had the energy, um, but there's, a, there's more of a calmness in his decision making for sure and, and that's built all season. It's been better all season, it's, he's improved all season and uh, he was very unlucky to be left out of the team, certainly against South End. Uh, but I went with a different shape. But you know, he just showed even at right back. You know, he, he slotted down one when Raz come off, uh, and uh, he slotted down one and done really well. This last week, though, is it just going to be another normal week at Carrington? Um, yeah, uh, nothing different. Meticulous planning. We'll probably go offside the staff and maybe the chair to do some uh, you know external planning and detail a bit further past uh, past Saturday's game. There's so much to do. So yeah, you know, we're forever planning, we're forever trying to get better, improve, and you know, if we can bring that points total home of 85 points, then uh, it's uh, it's been a strong, strong season for Bury Football Club, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll we'll need to know how do we get, keep getting better and improving. Have you even sat down and, and looked at recruitment for next season? You know, is that something you're going to leave until it's all done? We've we've had a small percentage of our eye on it. We always do. Um, certainly, you know, we've. We've got someone out there who's looking, and 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 they'll keep putting that into the database, and 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 agents are pushing. You know, agents are really pushing the players now. So uh, you've got to be always mindful that it's there. You don't want to lose out on something that's really too good to be true. So yeah, we're mindful of it, but it's not not a real focus. We've had it's been hammered down for the last well since since Christmas. If I'm being honest, it's been really hammered down. The players uh, say you know putting an, an unbelievable shift in, and uh, they've had the rewards. You won't have seen it at half time, but the reaction from the youngsters when they got their trophy in the hands and the medals in the pocket, just a nice picture to see. They've totally deserved it, you know. I think Duds was a bit disappointed that um, you know, Rochdale ended up, you know, beating Wigan for them to, you know, uh, clinch promotion. But promotions won over a season, it's what you do over that season. However many games you're playing, it's what you do over that season and that's what the youth team have done and Kiddo's done. Uh, the biggest thing for me and you know the is really not winning the league. It's knowing that there's players that can step in from that group, you know, into our first team environment, and uh, and you see it when they get respected off the lads. That's the key stage in their development. That you know, I've seen it where uh, a kid can't handle the ball, gives it away too much, and and the players don't accept in the group, and that's that's difficult. You know, you're swimming against the tide when that happens. But we've not had that. Even Folsey can come in, you know, and he's just 17, and the boy will not give the ball away. Um, Burge has looked, has looked sublime in what he's done. Um, he's really progressed, and, and you know, kiddos teaching him in the same rhythms and, and, and the way we're teaching them, and they do fit into a system. Just one quick one that recruitment followed up to Centre Garden there. Does the division affect your recruitment? What division barrier is it? No, I don't think it does, Keith. You know, we, we're always looking for a certain type of player. Mm. Um, I think January we took a bit of a U turn and got mm. a different type of player in. Uh, you know, Adam Alab, a real you know, dominator and a dynamic leader. Um, so, you know, we, we, we sort of altered our attacks a little bit round about January for this league. Uh, but no, it doesn't because, you know, you want to... I think we're trying to build a League League One squad, whether you're in your League Two, you know, you're still trying to be, build a League One squad. So uh, we've, we've got... We know where we're going with the recruitment um, and it's, it's, always, it's always improving. Most of the lads are boxed off anyway, aren't they? That's the good news. Yeah, we've got, we've got uh, well, you, you know, you see with Alan Moore today, you know, he's um, he's got the energy. We've just got to make sure that we, through the summer, he has a fantastic mm. programme, good pre-season. He'll come to Tenerife with us and um, that's where he'll get his base work that, it, that he's not had this season. And yeah. and it's vital that, that players get that. People forget that drags on for the, for nine months, don't you? You're playing catch-up from day one, aren't you? It's right through Europe. There's a stat, you know, mm. however many weeks you missed during pre-season, mm. then, you, you know, you're almost out for... You know, a good percentage yeah. of that. So uh, it's it's important that most of the players and most of our players have got through a good pre-season and beyond, 
Um, and, and you know we've we've had a very good success rate in terms of uh, fitness and injuries. Yeah, you have. Yeah, I mean, just you mentioned it, alluded to it before. It was almost surreal at the beginning, wasn't it? You're saying Wimbledon sort of didn't do what a lot of other clubs have mm. done, but crowd-wise, it was it was almost as if the stuffing had been been knocked out. I mm. felt on Tuesday with the crowd, it was very very quiet. Then suddenly there's a, there's a bit of a lift. Then suddenly we find out, you know, the other two we're winning, they're not. Then you then you finish the game off. Then it gets all edgy again. It was a really sort of surreal atmosphere, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I suppose um, Tuesday night, we all got used to Tuesday night with, with 8,500 and it was like a playoff game, wasn't mm. it? A cup game. It was it was brilliant to be a part of Tuesday night football. And then, yeah, I, I've not even took that into account, but you're right, it, it seems subdued a little bit, um, but I don't think our performance uh, created the you know, excitement around mm. it. So that's potentially... A, um, you know something that I can look at, but certainly, yeah. The, the, as, as soon as we sort of got the first goal, and then we started dominating play and, uh, and moving the ball better. We move the ball better, a lot better. You know, we give it away sloppy for staff, uh, but we move the ball a lot better, cleaner, and uh, our work was better second half, which we, we yeah. created. We created some of our best chances today, and, and you know we've, we took two of them. Yeah. Would you say that the game almost was a way of the crowd and the players getting Tuesday out of the system, really? Just sort of yeah, sort of I think so. Out. When Keith's just uh, alerted us to that, then I think probably... Um, I did it Thursday with the players. I definitely uh, flushed it out, you know, of, of that disappointment and that, you know, and, and I, I was getting sick of people saying, oh, we played well, played really well, some, you know, great football, played really well. And it knocked me sick for a couple of days myself because... You know, I, I, I want to win football matches and uh, we didn't deliver that on Tuesday, but certainly uh, today we've delivered uh, three points and, and another clean sheet and, um, you know, two two very good goals. So today's, again, pleased me and 82 points is a good return from the games we've played. Uh, 85 points will, 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 will be a very good season for us. Yeah, it's funny, we talk about permutations and there's nothing you can do about that. You can think about it as long as you like, can you? But you probably wouldn't have predicted anything that went on today. Um, with Southend going down to 10 men and scoring late and stuff like that. I mean, you've got no control over anything other than what you do against Tremor, have you? Southend, you know, they've, they've won the last eight, uh, eight clean sheets, you know, so the team in form in the league, uh, very resilient, very stubborn. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's the team that puts the last last run together, mm. you know, that nicks that, that third spot. Uh, the two outright right winners, um, Burton and Shrewsbury, have been very consistent all season, mm. you know. Uh, keeping clean sheets and scoring goals have been incredibly consistent, very professional in the work ethic and uh, you know it's, it's a credit to them how many points they've achieved but certainly um, you know as, as Wickham sort of stumbled and just stumbled to, to, you know, through it, them two have just gone on and on and on mm. like a machine uh, but so has Southend so you know um, they've, they've got a way of playing and uh, they win football matches with it. Mm. And uh, you know, and credit to them, they, you know, 87 minute, they don't believe they're out of a football match, and they, they're not out of a football match. Um, but next week, it's fantastic to know that we we still got an opportunity to uh, to go up automatic. Um, you know, in in in, in a, you know, a give it everything game. Mm. And I suppose I, mean, I didn't realise how much Markham were going to have a play a hand to play in everything that's happened. Mm -hmm. I mean, today they've beaten Wickham and then they play Southend next week. So yeah. Jim Bentley's uh, been a busy boy of these last couple of couple of weeks, mm. hasn't he? I mean, I said it when we played him. You know, Jim Bentley probably don't get the credit he deserves. You know, his budget up there's um, probably one of the smallest in the league. Uh, he keeps keeps winning football matches in this league. You know, gaining to his points total and. Uh, you know, very astute, very astute guys. Uh, no football inside out. Mm -hmm. uh, get players playing for them. You know, so then um, listen. You know, Jim, Jim will, will be given everything to try and you know, you know, beat Southend. But we've just got to concentrate on us. And, and yeah. like I said, I won't be wasting any energy on that. It's going to be you know, great planning week for us to to play our next opponent, which mm -hmm. is Tranmere. I and mean, we've talked about Tranmere. Just one last thing about that. I mean. Is it a relief, strangely? I mean, not to be disrespectful to the club, that you don't have to go there and, and be the ones you know that might send them down. I mean, that that can be quite a bitter atmosphere, can't it, on the final day? Yeah, you know, and um, you know, I'd take no enjoyment in that. You no. know, Tranmere. Uh, when I took it, when I look at the two uh, Liverpool clubs, and you know, Liverpool and Everton, and they're in the shadows of that. You know, they've they've, they've been a fantastic football club, and they unearth a lot of players. Mm. Uh, Plan's obviously gone wrong there, and uh, it's. I'm gutted that a team like Tramia, you know, have, 
have gone down because mm. you know for me um, it's good people they're, they're they're a fantastic club and and they're passionate you know they're, mm. the fans are passionate um, so it's a, it's a very good football club that's gone you know gone down and it's difficult to get back you know you look at you look at the likes of like Luton and Wrexham you know mm. Wrexham don't look like getting anywhere near mm. out of that league so uh, you know it's it's, it's massive. Uh, Massive trauma for, for Tramia, but yeah, I'm probably relieved a little bit that uh, you know it, it doesn't hinge on us going down there and uh, you know maybe knocking a team out of the league because yeah. that, I get no joy out of that. No, it's a shit for Northwest football anyway. <laughs> Great show, yeah. yeah, it, it is, it yeah. is. Well, well, one last question: we, we were talking about Ryan Kidd and the youth team and stuff mm. like that. Um, I was just wondering, then next year you've got these lads coming in. Um, is there any sort of idea that you may be setting up some sort of? Next tier, next tier between the under 18s and, and the first team, uh, would you be interested in like a, an under 21s or a reserve setup? Is that something you'd like to do in the future? Probably, probably not ready yet. Probably not ready. We're probably one year away from doing that successfully. Um, you can do that, and then what that tends to happen is the games overlap. Mm. You know, the best, it's like Keel O'Brien this season, he's not played, but he's certainly developed. You know, he trains, you know, he's, he's trained against uh, Daniel Nardiello, he's training against. Uh, Ryan Law, their movement, Halmult's power, mm. you know, so he's, he's improving in the training programme as much as it seems. I think Folds, uh, you know, Foldsy, um, Duds, they'll, they'll improve in and around these group of players. This is yeah. a fantastic group of first team players. I've got a want them in and amongst that. And what sometimes the games programme can do is take you away from that because you're prepping for a different yeah. occasion. Something we're looking at certainly, and you know, if we can get some some of this season's first years through, then we'll have more numbers for that. Um, but at the minute, we have only got five uh, that have come through. Mm. So you know, it's it's just it's a delicate one, but it's something that we're looking at. Right, cheers. Thank Do you think it's worth for you? It's worth celebrating a little bit. It's something you just I didn't wasn't aware till you mentioned it right at the beginning about if you win next week, it's a, a record point score. Normally speaking. You'd be up nine years out of ten. This is this would be it, wouldn't it? And that's got to be celebrated, surely, hasn't it? Does it not remind you of the goal scenario or something like Rory McIlroy shoots? Yeah, sorry, <laughs> sorry, shoots minus ten, and some bugger goes and, does, and shoots minus fifteen, isn't it? Um, bit... You know, we'll, we'll, we'll see, Keith. What, I look at the body of work. I look at continual improvement. Mm. You know, in eighteen months, then we'll turn a team that was going out of the league. Uh, into a team that's contending and, and, and give it the very best shot. That's to be celebrated. Group, isn't it? This group of players, I, I don't know, but this group of players have given everything they've got mm. for that 85 points. You can't achieve 85 points without brilliant <laughs> people and top players, and we've got that. Uh, my only concern is, uh, you know, celebrating is about when you've won something. So, uh, yeah. 85 points is a fantastic achievement, mm. and um, but if that doesn't get us over the line, then uh, you know I, I can't celebrate that. But certainly. I can celebrate a group of players that have given everything to the to the football club and the fans, um, and it's been it's been a, a you know a two way thing because mm. the church gives everything, the fans have given everything, the players have given the have given both the full the full lot. Then if you don't, you've got another chance anyway. Absolutely. <laughs> you know,